Hey, GED students. So uh, Justin emailed me at lightandsaltlearning at gmail.com and um, had this question about an equation that he was trying to solve. So uh, he had been solving these two and three step equations on the advanced level practice from the crash course, advanced level practice of solving two step equations and uh, got stuck on this one. And what got him stuck was this third power. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So now, you know, the directions just say solve, and there's not a lot to do here with this particular equation. All I need to do to solve this is work to get this letter alone. I need to isolate X, get him by himself. But there's uh, something that you're going to notice about X. So just visually, I want you to see here. See how X is like in this grouping, and this entire grouping is being raised to the third power? We've got to, as I call it, untrap uh, X from this grouping before I can work to get those other numbers away from him. I've got to get this third power to get out of here. All right. And so remember your inverses. Algebra is all about being able to work opposites. We get rid of things by doing the opposites. So we know the inverse or opposite of addition is subtraction. And the inverse or opposite of multiplication is division. A lot of us, if we've been doing the advanced level practices, know that the inverse or opposite of the second power, square, is the square root, okay? But what is the opposite of the third power? Well, similarly, it's a power. The opposite is a root, but it's not the square root. It's what we call the cube root, the cube root, little three tucked in the check mark there, and that is the opposite of the third power. So that is what we need to do here. We need to take the cube root of this entire right-hand side in order to break it loose of this grouping. Make sure you tuck that little three there in the check mark. Uh, if you do a square root, you're not doing the opposite. You're not doing what you think you're doing. Now, you say, can we do that? I say, you can do whatever you want. Remember, you can do whatever you want to an equation as long as you do it to both sides. So hop across that equal sign and don't take the square root of eight, take the cube root of eight. Now there's two ways to do this problem. You can know your cube roots and how to deal with cube roots by hand, or you can put it in your calculator. Now, this is the actual reason I was holding off on doing this problem. I wanted to show you guys how to do it in the calculator, uh, but I still don't have my calculator app even though I paid for it because Texas Instruments hasn't gotten back to me yet, but that's okay. I need tech support. Uh, I'll show you how to do it by hand and I'll tell you how to do it in the calculator. So by hand, when you're dealing with opposites, remember you can always think back to the original power. When I say what is the cube root of eight, I'm saying what number cubed, what number raised to the third power would give me eight? Well, what number is that? It's two. If you raise two to the third power, two times two times two is eight. So cube root takes me back to that original number. Uh, so the cube root of eight would just be two. Now, if you say, Kate, I don't know that. How am I supposed to know that? I don't know my perfect cubes. Dear Lord, there's enough to memorize in math without you throwing that in my face. You can also do this in your calculator. Whenever you're solving equations on the GED, you'll be able to do it in your calculator. But it takes a little bit of knowledge. And I do have a whole video on just how to use the calculator for this if you want to go check it out. Um, I think it's called um, calculators for cube roots, square and cube roots. But how you do it is you put the number three in already. You need the index, the number that's in the check mark, typed in first. And then you hit the green second button. And then after that, so let's see, I hit the three, the green second button. Oh, I need the xth root. So it's right on that caret button. You're gonna hit the caret button so you can get the xth root. And, ooh, I did it wrong. Let me try it again. Oh, I hit, I hit X squared. Fired, Kate. So three X through. There we go. And then you can type in eight and enter, and it will tell you two. Sweet. Okay. Now, on the other side, a lot of students are panicking, losing their mind. It looks so complex and complicated, but don't forget why you did what you did. You did what you did because cubing and cube rooting are opposites. So opposites cancel out. Opposite operations cancel each other out. They go away. And so what am I left with now? I'm just left with that 3x minus 1.
And a lot of students will say, but Kate, don't I need the grouping? Why? We're not doing anything to that group anymore. We released it from what was happening to it when it, we took, got rid of that third power. And so those parentheses are no longer necessary. And now it's a really easy two-step equation. We can see if we want to get x alone, we just have to get rid of this minus 1 and this 3. And as usual, uh, when I'm dealing with the um, order of operations, you know, I'm going to move backwards so I'm going to get rid of anything adding or subtracting first when I'm solving. I'm going to work through the order of operations backwards. So I'm going to add the 1 to both sides. Let's see what happens. Subtracting 1 and adding 1 are opposites. They cancel. On the right hand side 3x will be by itself and then 2 plus 1 is the math to do over there on the left and I do get 3. Now I'm almost done but that x is not quite alone. I got to get rid of this 3. It's shoved up against the x so it must be multiplying. I'll do the opposite. I'll divide. Now I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. And let's see what my new equation will be now. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Equal sign stays nice and steady. Multiplying and dividing by 3 are opposites. They cancel. And x is alone, isolated by itself. Woohoo! I'm done. When you get your letter alone, you are done. So what is the solution here? Well, in order for this original equation to be true, x would have had to be 1. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.